All right, all right. So I have had this Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, uh, I guess around four, going on five months now. And it has been a fantastic printer. Um, and I did get it with the AMS, so I got the full-blown package. And uh, it has been printing fantastic. Uh, the only thing, the only thing I noticed, and it was with the AMS, when you load it up, if you're loading with uh, bamboo lab spools of filament, it works fantastic. Now there are some other spools from other manufacturers. They're kind of iffy. It's uh, some of the spools are they might be a little too wide and they won't fit in the cradle and they won't you know turn like they should. Um, others they might have a larger diameter spool and just slightly larger enough where you can't close the lid or it'll scrape. So there are some spools that will not work at all. Others are iffy. Some of them have, um, and I do this a lot, some of them have the cardboard spools. And for me, they've been working great. But it's not like I use them over and over and over. It's once the spool is gone, well, I'm off to the next one, you know, because uh, the cardboard, if you keep using it over and over, I can see how it could, you know, uh, shred away and and start inhibiting, you know, rolling it around. But luckily there's a lot of uh, makers out there, a lot of spools that, that will work. So it is highly recommended to uh, transfer the filament from the spools that, that will not work in there, um, in the AMS, and transfer them over to a bamboo lab spool or other spool that does work, right? Uh, but transferring the filament can be a pain in the butt. Um, if you don't have a fixture to semi-automate automate the, the process, right? And uh, keep everything in place and then transfer it over uh, fairly quickly. So if you're looking for uh, some kind of fixture, well, this, this is what I came up with. So here it is. This is what I came up with. Uh, now this version, you can see it's all, everything is 3D printed, right? Uh, except for the hardware I used to tack this down on a 2x6. And, and that being said, I did mount it to a 2x6 um, just temporarily while I'm testing everything. Uh, for the base you can use, um, I plan on using some aluminum extrusions, kind of like one of these rollers like that. Well, I get the aluminum extrusions and I can make the base out of it. Uh, do whatever you want. You can tack it directly down to a tabletop if you want. But, uh, but just for testing, I, I just did it on a 2x6. Now all this stuff, it is all 3D printed. Um, and this is the first version of it. And with this one, I did use uh, PLA just for, uh, for the ease of printing and you know, the lower cost filament while I uh, develop everything. Uh, but now that it's finished, I'll probably switch over and use either uh, maybe a, a nylon carbon fiber or PETG carbon fiber. Um, just something with a little more sturdy. You can see it kind of flexes a little bit. Now I did this in three sections. You can see back here, this is the rear, this is the mid, and this is the front. Um, I did this just for uh, printability purposes, you know, given the size of the base, you know, everybody can just, you know, fit these on, uh, even if it's just printed on a Ender 3 or something, you know, you don't have to have a huge uh, uh, printing bed to do all this. Uh, there are quite a few parts, but uh, but the next versions, you know, there's going to be one with uh, uh, using bearings and maybe even a motor instead of a hand crank. Um, so, well, you can see this is, you can see what it's doing. Uh, this is, get it at an angle you can see. And this, I, I have um, a PTFE tube going through the guide, and that is just to help. Uh, I noticed when I'm transferring the, the filament from from the donor over to the uh, to the final drive here, the if there's not a, enough tension, the 
the filament is still kind of in a wound state and it's all curved and, and it doesn't transfer that well. Uh, but I did do two versions of it, one with the PTF tube and you can see the guide here uh, without. So you can do either or. So looking at this, you can see here, here's the driven gear. This is uh, where the spool is gonna go into. Uh, by cranking on this handle clockwise, you can see the spool is going counterclockwise and it's a two to one ratio. So every, every one turn um, of the handle, it's two turns on the spool, on the driven spool here. Uh, from here, we're going over to the midsection and this is uh, the filament guide. And you can see as I turn it, the guide is moving back and forth. And this, um, I left the gear this size. Uh, I could slow it down doing, to, to, to slow this down, uh, going back and forth, I can make the gear larger um, and that would slow down uh, the gear there. And I'm calling it a worm gear. And this actually doesn't matter which way you go, right? But of course you want to be going this way to transfer the, the filament correctly. And then over here on the front section, you can see this is the donor spool. Uh, you put this on and feed it through. And this, you don't actually have to use this if you don't want. Uh, if you already have something made like, like this version here, if you already have something like that, sure, you can use that in place of, in place of this. But uh, well, that's a, a quick look at it. Let's let's fill these things up uh, with filament and uh, and start transferring some. All right, so this bull's already on here, but let me show you how this is put on and off. And you can see this is uh, reverse threaded, this portion of it. That's because you can see when it's driving this way, it's putting pressure counterclockwise. So I didn't want that to come loose. So it comes off pretty easy. And to put the spool on, See, it just comes right off. And the adapters here, you can make these to whatever size you need for whatever filament size you're gonna put in. They're just separate adapters. And you can see I put little keyways on there so that um, does need pressure to keep the, the spool from just spinning freely, but the teeth there will, will help it. And you can see here, this is a, it's a notch on this side and it's sealed on this side. So when you drop it in, this side just drops in and then you line up your, your gear threads. Don't forget that it is uh, reverse threaded. And there we go, so it's already engaging. There we go. That's easy on this, it's even easier. You just uh, take this off. Boom, and there's our there's our adapters. This side, it doesn't need um, the teeth on. So, here's the, the donor spool. This one I noticed, it's, it's actually a, a slightly thinner, the spool. So I don't think I've ever tried it on the AMS, 
uh, but I don't think it's going to work just because of the width. It's actually, the width is too narrow. So, and I'm not even going to put any adapters on this. I'm just going to let it run freely on that axle. So let's, uh, let's get this going. Oh, I want this on the upper side. So let's turn it around. Clip this off. Okay. There we go. Kind of creaky, isn't it? Then you see how it just goes back and forth and distributes distributes the filament. Now, without the PTFE tube on here, I'd also notice that you can see the way the filament curves like that. Uh, it was even more pronounced without the PF the PTFE tube and. You can experiment with the different lengths. You can have the, the PFV tube, you know, going all the way across, but it, it just helps uh, keep the tube straightened out here. So I was gonna have this built in to the guide, but it's awfully hard to print off to begin with, so. <laughs> And you see how this is right here on the gear. And it's really the mount. You can see how it, it's flexing back and forth. And I think if I use a different filament, like I said, nylon, uh, carbon fiber, or I think that will stiffen it up. If not, then I'll stiffen up the, the guides. Uh, yeah, so that's about it. It's, uh, it works pretty well. There is some room for improvement. Um, and it does come with, you know, it, it does take a lot of printing. There are quite a few parts to print out. Uh, but once it's assembled, you know, swapping the spools is, is fairly easy. And, uh, and it's ready to go. And some of the parts also, uh, beware, some of them are tough to print. There's a couple of pieces, um, like the, the gearing here for the guide. Uh, I, I played around a lot with, uh, um, with supports and finally got a good version of it that's operating now. But uh, in the guide itself also, it was kind of funky looking and uh, it was kind of hard to print out, but you know, once that was done, it was done. Yeah, so this version of it, uh, you can find it on printables.com. I will have it under uh, V3 Precision. Uh, I'll include a link and I'll also have it on the, on the website, v3precision.com. So this version, uh, this is all, all 3D printed parts. Like I said, it'll be on printables and it'll include any instructions for assembly, recommendations when I was printing on what, uh, uh, what support settings I used. And I, and I did print all this off on the, on the Bamboo Lab uh, X1 Carbon. Uh, some of this stuff, yeah, when I was very first printing them out, I was printing them off on uh, on the Ender 3s that I have uh, modified over here, but they took a long time, right? <laughs> I'm getting spoiled with, uh, with the X1 Carbon, but, uh, but anyway, you can find them on printables.com. Now, this did take...
quite a long time for me to uh, to design this and print everything off. Uh, and you can see I did it in uh, Fusion 360 here. And it did take me quite a long time, like I said. So on printables, any, any kind of uh, donations or anything that you could help me out with, I'd be greatly appreciated. That would help me especially on these next versions of this it'll help me with the cost of filament and uh, and the time it took me to design this stuff because I do want to come out with one with with bearings and a motor and of course if you wanted uh, a fully printed version of it even sub assembly or partially uh, assembled you know ready to go I'll be offering that also so you could probably find that on on the V3 Precision dot com website or maybe on Etsy so if you want to go that direction that's that's great you know and pretty soon I'll be working on these next versions and they'll be available also yeah so I'll include uh, any links or anything if you want to donate that would be fantastic I'll include the links down in the description and on uh, on the printables dot com site I'll include a link there uh, but I guess that is it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. I hope it works well for you. Uh, print them off, and I'd love to hear the feedback, right? Either feedback on printables.com or feedback uh, on this video. And later on, I will be coming out with uh, a making of, I guess, and I'll, I'll go down some of the, the critical design points that I went through while, uh, while designing this. Well, I guess that is it. So, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and watch for my next video.